Welcome to the Insurance Buzz. This is your host, Michael Weaver, and I am pumped about today's guest, man. We've got Mr. Dan Kitajima. Dan, how are you today? Good, Michael. Hey, thank you so much for having me on. It's great knowing you earlier. We had a, a fun conversation. We should have had that recorded, huh? <laughs> and it was a good I bet, I bet we get into some of that again. So, <laughs> man, brother, I appreciate you. So let's just dig into this. Like, you're, you're obviously a rock star farmer's agent, but who was Dan before insurance? Uh, before insurance, um, I was selling sneakers. So that's what I did. Um, it was a commission job. So I always knew sales was something that I always wanted to do because my compensation was based on performance. And even though it was part-time while I was going to college, I was still making pretty good money uh, and had a schedule that they could work with. So um, that's what I was doing. I graduated college, and I knew for sure what I wanted to do was be in sales still. Okay. So straight out of college, did you go into insurance? Yeah, I did. I got a job at AAA that was, again, uh, you know, an all commission job and that's exactly what I was looking for. It's pretty rare back in the days or even now probably to have a sales job at a sneaker shop that was 100% commission, but that's what it was. But uh, I think that um, foundation was great for me because I was always looking at shoes and I was thinking which one I'm gonna buy and that made me work harder. And I understood that, hey, based on performance, creativity and work ethic, then I could you know, um, make a difference in my paycheck. And so I, I just knew that I wanted to be in commission only job. And then that's where I went to AAA, which was a commission only job. And then I took another step further, which is farmer's insurance, uh, which is I'm agent for for 15 years now. And, you know, the sales job is something that I had a full commission job. But now, you know, being a business owner is on a whole nother level, taking risks and being 100 percent commission. With, you know, uh, what's the base pay, right? <laughs> Man, I'm with you. Yeah, that's, um, dude, that's super cool. So obviously we were talking about before this. So your love of shoes comes from probably your day of selling sneakers. Yeah, no, it's just something that um, I was blessed. My parents, you know, I was playing basketball all my life through growing up and they just um, always got me Jordans every year, you know, growing up. And um, I really thanked them for that. But what happened when I got into college was like, okay, well, we're not going to buy shoes anymore. So I said, okay, I better figure something out here. So I got a job where I could get a discount and make money buying them. Dude, that's uh, that's legit. All right, yeah. If you guys, if you guys don't follow Dan, make sure you do that, man. He's got a he's got a heck of a social media presence, anyways. But once you follow him, you'll know what I mean about his uh, about his love for shoes. So, all right. So <clears throat> usually I go the direction of why insurance, and I, and I will ask you that. Like besides being a hundred percent commission, which I freaking love. Like that's that's why I got into it because I'm a big believer that. Hey, the harder I work, the more money I should be able to make. If I'm going to put in the time and master my craft, I should be rewarded for that. But what made you, because there's a lot of 100% commission jobs out there, careers out there. What made you take the insurance route? Well, I kind of just uh, fell into it. Um, I did have a Honda Civic uh, in college, and I was driving it to Nike Town <laughs> in Costa Mesa. Uh, from Long Beach to Costa Mesa, Fun, funny story, still really to shoes there, but um, I got in an accident, you know, it was a big accident on the freeway, and it got completely totaled, and I, I did have AAA at that time, um, and I was just kind of blown away with how they treated me and how everything worked, um, how I got the actual cash value of the car, and it was pretty generous where I was able to get a Honda Accord, so I kind of saw the value in insurance at an early age while I was in college. So when I was about to graduate from Cal State Long Beach, the job fair, there was a, um, a AAA booth there. So I said, hey, you know, you guys did a great job. I have, I believe in your products. So, and then so it so happens they we're looking for sales positions. So I kind of fell into it. It's kind of funny how, you know, I have my podcast too. And I talked to other agents, but it's so funny how just chance, random chance sometimes brings into, in, us into our business, but that's uh, how it worked out there. Yeah, man. Okay. I love that. So triple A was more of just a sales position, right? You weren't actually like running a business. Is that right? That's absolutely right. Yeah. It's a inside sales team. So we, they provide the training, they got us licensed and then we were on the floor uh, call center, you know, you could mm -hmm. just see 200 agents in a call center getting, uh, you know, calls coming in and um, just trying our best to close them. Um, and I did pretty well there, you know, 
Um, I, I was the top earning agent there by the time I left. I was there for three years. And um, why it didn't work out, we wouldn't get, get too much into. Um, but, you know, uh, things didn't work out. I think most of it was due to um, some of my uh, ego problems, I, I guess you could say, which I, I, I learned really importantly at a young age too. If you're doing really well, then you have to kind of control that, uh, that you think that way and you're overvaluing yourself too much. So at a young age, making money, I learned that lesson. And I think that has helped me to this day where I want to um, always appreciate and never overestimate myself uh, and stay humble and hungry. And uh, when it didn't work out, you know, I was, I felt ready. You know, I knew how to sell insurance and I just wanted to uh, start my own business. And that's uh, where uh, I started my farmer's insurance agency 15 years ago. Man, I um, I dig that. You, you uh, I actually saw a post you made the other day that was that, that you said the the more I drop my ego, the more money I make. <laughs> and I and I couldn't help but just be like, holy smokes, he is spot on with that. Yeah, you know it's kind of funny as you know, not in just insurance business, but you know sometimes you make your first hundred k and you think like nobody could tell you anything anymore. <laughs> you know, and it's just um, a, a lesson that I had to learn through where you're, if you're competitive and, com you know, you're hitting the numbers and you're confident. Uh, those are all good things. But uh, it was funny when I just looked back at things, I was like, man, the more I put make myself a beginner, the more I make myself a student, the more I learned. And the more I felt like I didn't know anything, the more I learned and the more you, you know, I mean, everybody, it's cliche, but the more you learn, the more you earn. So I looked back at it, I was like, man, what, what was the benefits of having a high ego and having a low ego? And I really try to like, and I read, you know, Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday pretty recently. And um, I, I, I was just thinking about it and I was like, and I was telling my team too, because sometimes our team has great months and we were, have record breaking months and I want us to keep going the right way. And I thought, hey, that's the only thing that could almost stop us. And I wanted to drill this point into them so much that I was like, how can I simplify this as much as possible? And I said, hey, the, lower, the more we lower it, the more income we'll make. So it's like, okay, well, how can you argue against that? You know, what's, what better reason? Well, besides, so there's a lot of different reasons, but I just looked back at it and I thought there was some uh, truth behind that. Yeah, man, I um, <clears throat> I dig that a lot. I appreciate you even talking about that because you uh, you're very humble. I can tell because I know your I know your book size. Um, just in in things I've heard about you, I've heard really good things. I know you're a freaking stud, and you haven't even brought that up one time just to show like it, it just says a lot about you. You're you're um, I, I watch you. I mean, you're you're a leader from the front. I mean, I, you're taking photos at the office at seven o'clock at night. Like I I just dig that, brother. So that that's good stuff. Oh yeah, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yeah, I'm also looking forward to having you on my show too. So uh, you did agree to it. So I'll oh man, to that. man, I cannot <laughs> wait, brother. So tell me a little bit. So tell me what's going on right now in in agency as far as maybe like some changes. Um, well, tell I know there's a lot that goes on. So tell me something that's on your mind, and let's just have a conversation around it. Yeah, right now, uh, California is having some profitability issues. All companies really, uh, Department of Insurance is not um, accepting rate increases. So it's a tough situation where they're a little too uh, consumer centric, but insurance companies have to adjust and have to, um, since we can't increase rates, we have to make adjustments on billing and underwriting <coughs> and coverage. So the coverage is a big one too, uh, but there's just been a lot of changes and we're pretty big on um, auto insurance. Um, and it's just, you know, from going from 400K uh, new business premium, right now we're doing about uh, well, this month it just started, so this month we're going to be ending at around 300k. So it's a little hit to us. It's a hit to our producer's income, which kills me. Um, but you know, we all go through these changes uh, in our business uh, careers, and I think this is one of the major ones. But I just wanted to share. It's just been on my mind, and I'm just telling my team this constantly every day: is that changes are going to come, and how we're going to handle them is what's ultimately going to determine our futures in this business. So um, I've been telling them uh, I've been very thankful for them for staying positive. I think that's something that we have to do. We have to be optimistic and we have to adapt, you know. So um, that's just something that 
I've been just really, and I think experience helps because I've been through some of these changes, probably two or three major ones in my business career. And I look back at it at that time I was so devastated. I was like, oh my God, I can't, we're not going to be able to operate this anymore. I was dwelling on it too long. I was complaining about, you know, the company's uh, changes or directions they wanted to make. And I was also complaining about the economy or the government or the DOI and all this thing, just really placing the blame elsewhere. Where now I look back at it, it took me a while, but now I'm just like, man, I'm able to move on so quickly. Uh, and these two, three weeks, I've just been working so hard because I just have this obligation that I have to figure something out for my team because I just don't want their checks to be smaller for too long. Like, that's not good for me. And no matter what the underwriting changes are, the goals are still the same. Our attitude is the same. Our work ethic is the same. Well, actually, our work ethic has to be maybe even higher for the short term. But whatever changes have come, We've gotten better in the long run because of it, you know. So another Ryan Holiday book I just want to shout out is Obstacles Away. So that book has tr helped me tremendously. Uh, but whenever there's an obstacle as insurance agents, I have found that if you look hard enough, or sometimes right in front of you, there's opportunities there. Um, so I just want to share that with with uh, insurance agency owners out there because changes is in inevitable, and how we deal with them is so critical. And I'm just really proud of my team, but I'm still, if you ask me what's going on with me right now, that's just on my mind right now. Like, I just have to figure out a way for my producers to give them what I promised, which is, I sold them a dream that they're going to be able to, you know, reach their financial goals within my agency, and I have to come through with them at, this, at times like this. So, um, yeah, that's what's going on right now. Uh, but um, I think a lot of other agents probably could relate to changes and uh, obstacles. But I'm um, actually weirdly excited because this is where some of the best ideas come from, you know, when your back's against the wall. And uh, this is my chance to prove to the team because for a while everything was going fine and I was kind of like getting like kind of stale. Like I was like, what do I, I didn't have to do anything. You know, I don't sell or service and, the, and some of the things are on uh, autopilot. So my value to the agency was like, wow, like, you know, I kind of needed more things to do, I felt like, you know, so this is something that uh, came uh, and I uh, feel like I'm more ready for the challenge this time around than ever. So um, if you guys maybe are newer or lack experience of going through some difficult times in your agency, I just want to share with you guys through experience, you'll be able to look back and see that you're able to overcome these challenges before. Sometimes the challenges aren't as bad as you always think it is. And sometimes good news isn't as good as you think it is. So you just have to stay, stay even keel and be ready for the challenges and do everything you can to handle them when they come. Mm. And you you said so many good things there. I uh, <clears throat> I actually wrote down changes inevitable. Like that's the one constant thing you can count on every single day, every single week, every single year is change. And so, how do you adapt to those changes? And then, most importantly, how do you focus on controlling the controllables? Like, how can you focus on what you can control? Because that what you're dealing with right now, that's out of your control. That's out of your producer's control. And um, it takes me back to a stint in my, now not government wise or anything like that, but just uh, the company I was working with at the time got rid of uh, investments for a period of time. And that was about 30% of my income at that time. And so I was like, well, <laughs> what are we, how can we make, how can we make that up? Like, what can we focus on to bring value to the consumer to where it's a win-win where, what product can we folk really, really get super tight on and super like just master it to where, all right, we're going to focus on this and this will make up the income and ended up even making more money off of the product. And so, um, and I know that's all the thoughts that are going through your head probably right now as well Is like, okay, what can we focus on to drive results to where we can replace that income or even drive more income? Exactly. Yeah. Controlling what you can control, but yeah, I, I that your story kind of encourages me, you know, 30%, that's a big deal for your uh, revenue well, stream. So we, to have to overcome that and to actually increase it in the long, in the long run, that's kind of what I, uh, foresee happening with my agency. So uh, that really encourages me that you were able to overcome that. Yeah, man, it was, uh, and I was an early on business owner. It was, um, I was probably two and a half years in three years in. So like, you know what it is as an early, early, uh, agency oh, yeah. owner, the margins are tight anyways. And so I, I automatically mm -hmm. went into just like, okay, how do we, 
Because it was based off of bonuses and things like that as well. And it was like, all right, how can we not only replace this but make more? And that's when we just doubled down on the life insurance game and really just became like super experts at life insurance. And um, neither here nor there. I love I love the thing that I'm digging, though, right now. Like I just picture you like when you're explaining your mindset right now. And I don't know why I got this vision of you, but I feel like you're putting on like your, your freaking helmet, your gear, and you're just like, I'm ready to go to <laughs> battle, baby. Like, what's up? <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that's what we get paid to do as leaders, you know. We have to um, figure things out, figure things out, and get shit done, you know. So, I just really feel like um, that's, you know, our employees have the choice of who the, their employer is going to be, and they picked me. So I don't take that job uh, lightly. And um, if I was like, okay, well, that's just how it is, or if I was in a negative mood, then I think maybe I will lose some employees and they're so valuable to me and I'm so thankful for them that, um, you know, and for agency growth, I think that's a key part of it that a lot of agency owners don't talk about is agents, uh, employee retention. So I think that's something that is on my mind at all times and that kind of helps me act the way I do. Uh, to, and then also I think when you really do care about your employees and you get more creative and you actually end up building a bigger agency yourself, for yourself. Because if you're just thinking about yourself, then, hey, like, you know, the renewals are coming in, a new business slows down for a little bit. It's not the end of the world for me, but, you know, their checks are based on their new business commission. And if you're always looking out for them, then you actually will build a bigger agency for yourself. If you're just looking out for your lifestyle um, and your vacations and your toys and stuff like that, then you're actually, you know, make decisions that will probably be good for you in the short run. But And then there's nothing wrong with that, but my goals and ambition is to build a big agency and I just actually get more fulfillment out of helping my staff have you know uh, happy lives with their families so um, that's kind of what I feel like makes me happy and you know don't get it wrong it it does come back to me by uh, rewards of having a large agency there's definitely benefits for my personal life Uh, but I like to give first and then receive later and I um that's that's so good we we always had the motto and in, in, in our so in our motto in Weaver Sales Academy is happy, healthy, wealthy. Like we want everyone in the in the culture to be happy, both personal life and professional life. Because mm-hmm. if you're not doing well personally, you're not going to do well professionally. And so how can we make sure you're mm-hmm. as happy as possible, you're healthy, so you're taking care of yourself so that – because healthy is a big deal. Healthy is also going to allow you to perform at your, your max potential. And then obviously wealthy. And I think you have to be happy and healthy before you can ever be wealthy. Like wealthy is more than just money. Wealthy is a mindset. Wealthy is a lifestyle. And so, um, and we also always said like, you don't work for us. You work with us. Like we work side by side because mm-hmm. this thing takes a village. Like it's really lonely at the top if you're all by yourself. Um, And quite frankly, you'll never ever be able to maximize any opportunity unless you have a culture and a village behind you that's bought into that mission, bought into that vision to where everybody is winning. And that's exactly what I'm gathering from you. And and my question for you would be, Dan, is so what are some things that you've helped us? Like, obviously, anyone listening to this can tell that you are a very genuine, you care about your people, and, and there's a lot to be said about that. But what are some things that you've really done, one or two things maybe, to establish the culture or things that you continue to do to establish the culture you have? Yeah. No, before we get there, I mean, happy, healthy, wealthy. I'm gonna, I wrote that down. That's, that's awesome, Michael. You know, in the order that's in, too. You know, uh, that's that's awesome because I really believe in that. Uh, uh, especially the healthy, you know, I think sometimes we kind of overlook that, but that's a huge part of the game, you know, so that's the stuff I like to preach to my team too, but um, the way you broke it down and the, the water you have in it, I might Thanks, have to brother. use that. No, I love um, still, still away, yeah, man, no, I still away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, next email I would send out to my team is going to go over that. But yeah, the culture, um, that, that was it, right? How do I build the culture? Yeah, like one or two things maybe that you think these mm-hmm. are definitely things that any agency owner, any business owner, like this is this has helped you mm-hmm. really establish the winning culture you have today. Yeah, I think um, the first thing is, you know, I would say it's just my personality or just how I've been or maybe I get it from a dad. It's the work ethic part. You know, that's just kind of how it's just a DNA thing, but it's just how I'm wired. So I think that's start from the uh, the top, and if I'm working hard, then I think it could bring up the work level, work ethic level of the whole team. So I like to feel that um, 
we uh, we don't get outworked by anybody and we just um, don't shy away from it so you know I think our producers obviously not to my level but I think compared to an average producer or um, what helps us win is just being um, just more hard working you know making more calls and we track all these type of things obviously and just I think work ethic is, work ethic is a big um, part of our culture and then just you know number two is just um, be nice you know, be nice to each other, be nice to our clients, and just being a kind person. So I think you mix that, you know, sometimes you have to mix uh, being, you know, uh, highly competitive, by, by, but also being nice at the same time. You know, so that mixture of being competitive and um, kind, I think, is kind of like our formula when it comes to the big picture, when it comes mm. to our culture. My man, you speak in my language now. I always said the harder I work, the luckier I get, baby. Like, bring it on. Um, and then That's kindness, right. which is a really, really big... Um, I think that goes overlooked, and I think that that's part of a leadership style as well. I know Gary Vaynerchuk, he's a big, like, he's always preaching kind, empathetic, things like that. And I think that's a really, really big deal. Um, number one, you should just be a kind human being. What you put into this world, you get right back out of it. But people in today's, I think, work environment, they are looking to be led by a true leader, not a boss. All right. Like there, there's a difference between mm -hmm. a, a boss and a leader. And I think you're hitting it right on the head. Part of that is leading from the front with the work ethic, but also the empathy piece, the kindness piece. Like, are you a good human being? Or are you just like over here, like uh, doing the whip, like, come on, do your job or go, so go somewhere else. Like, and I think there's a difference. Yeah, absolutely. I think um, I think it's really important to be um, happy too. So to being kind to others makes you happy. You're more, more helpful for others than if you just feel good about yourself. And I think that's going to trickle down to the customer service people treating our customers better. As happier salespeople are going to close more deals. So it's just not only for ourselves, and we've got to treat ourselves really well. Um, because when you say you know healthy, would it be physical and mentally healthy? But it also being kind is good for business. So why not be yep. kind? You got to take care of those four bodies, man. Mental, physical, emotional, and spiritual, baby. So um, that, that's really, I, I love that you're, that you, that, that's good stuff. So tell me, um, so obviously you have a pretty, so from a marketing standpoint, all right. So if you're writing three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars $400,000 in premium a month, that's, uh, that's, that's really, really great. Tell me what your marketing maybe looks like, um, or, or maybe what you think is a strategy that, hey, if you're an agency owner, you might want to consider this strategy because it works really well. <clears throat> yeah, sure, Michael. Um, yeah, yeah, most of that is off six-month auto policies, too. So if you had an annual auto policies, then I'll be uh, able to uh, put up bigger numbers. But yeah, um, our marketing strategy has always been digital. Um, I've always bought internet leads from day one since 2007 when everybody said it was a fad, it won't work. Um, I kind of transitioned a little bit the last few years into more social media and some search too. So Facebook and Google uh, has been really working out for us. Uh, they're just more exclusive, they're real time, and I just felt like I was able to cut out the middleman. So that's um, my marketing uh, strategy because I just want to put my producers Again, thinking about your producers will make you make actions that will help your agency out because, you know, the internet league game, you're calling them, calling them, calling them, and you're just kind of starting off the conversation in a more of a desperate, you know, atmosphere where you're, they're doing you a favor by, you know, okay, fine, you, know, you could quote me, you know, and you just have to be in a, in a, in a position where you're like, okay, thank God I'm just able to quote somebody. So I wanted to kind of flip that around and be able to have other people call us. So that's kind of our um, approach when it comes to marketing is to put my position in a situation where they're just sitting there, somebody call and say, you want a quote? Okay, I'll help you. Not, well, not like that, but thank you for giving me a quote, but they're the ones contacting us. Then it's just so much of a better sales atmosphere for the producers. And it's just a better job, I would say. You know, who wants to go through all this, you know, cold calling and maybe you can have a marketer do that, obviously, but uh, it's just not wouldn't be a fun job to get all these rejections and to just to get a quote where if you get somebody to call you then your closing ratio is going to be higher obviously the lead cost will be a lot higher but I think it's a more sustainable job for the producers too um, and uh, so a lot of it is through search or social 
and then the back end of that is the lead management with automation. Mm -hmm. So I think those are the pillars. You know, we got to get the lead management um, side. Well, first you got to have the yep. lead volume. I think that's one thing that I think is not talked about enough is where, again, because I'm thinking about our producers, I want to make sure they have enough leads to work on. Uh, in the, my job as an agency owner is to get these phones ringing. You know, so get the phones ringing. Uh, so lead volume, you know, and that could be through social media or search or it could be through internet leads. I like those three avenues. And then it could be, then the lead management system has to be working. Mm -hmm. And the third piece is the producers. So their mindset, their composition um, plan, their training, their skill level, their expertise, and their motivation. So once you have those three things working, so those are the three things that I'm almost looking at to make sure we have a system that's running um, in, together to have a success. Yeah, man, system. I dig that. So, um, and, and honestly, like I was, so I actually entered the insurance business back when like 2010. So internet leads were a super hot topic and that's all we had in the office. And so um, I love the fact though that you're not using inter internet leads as your sole marketing source, which is where I find a lot of agency owners really can get into trouble because sometimes internet leads, in my opinion, um, can turn sharks into goldfish really, really quickly to where producers are just like, expecting like to be dropped. Whereas you're doing the same approach only with better leads, like social media, SEO. That's literally how we built our business as well. Like we never, we never, and I told you this, like we never did the internet lead thing because I did it as a team member and, um, I just didn't really dig it, but we did start off with cold calls, referrals, I think social media branding, like what you're doing, where you have a hot lead, they're exclusive, they are not being called by 40 people. I think that's so smart, man. So um, I love that you talked about that because I think that's a lot of, I think some agency owners are really still scared of, of the social media aspects of things. And so I love that you're digging into that and just running with it. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think the early game, I think it did teach me a, a lot of things, though. I mean, you have to be so good mm -hmm. to be able to close those, yep. you know, so it is a skill game. It's not, you know, a lot of times people will, again, blame the internet lead company, but it's just really, there's so many talented closers out there, and you're just competing with them, and you have, to, and then sometimes your product uh, competitiveness matters, but I think one thing it did teach me was, is, is the ability for agency owners to make that investment. You know, I think that's something that I do believe in, uh, looking back on my career, is just spending more on marketing is really uh, something that has helped me out. Uh, and again, that's because I want to give to my producers the opportunity. Um, so those other things that I'm doing right now may be more costly. Uh, and I think maybe agents also have a fear of those things because they're a little worried about, you know, striking out or being a beginner or being uncomfortable and not knowing anything about it. But anytime I go into, and even right now, while we go through this change, kind of goes back to the ego thing, you know, I'm okay with being a beginner. It's, I'm okay with sucking at this. I'm okay at losing money because I'm not good at it in the beginning, but I'm just curious and I just want to figure out something that works because if you're afraid of striking out, you're not going to hit the home runs. And really, you can find one marketing campaign and have 99 losers, but that one marketing campaign could just change the trajectory of your agency forever. So I'm willing to go through the L's um, so I could find a million dollar right. marketing campaign so I can make the M's. That's right, right. <laughs> and you've said that, man, and we, we getting buzzed on the buzz today, man. So I, I love this. This has been so good. So I got to ask, because you've said you're okay with being a beginner, um, losing, learning. I love all, you're not okay losing, but you're okay taking the L so you can find the W. Like I, I get that. So tell me maybe some things that you do just to help keep your mindset right. Um, keep that growing just mentality. Like I, I'd love to know what you're doing. Yeah, well, you know, um, I think just exercising is super underrated, so I exercise daily. So I think um, having consistency in my schedule, what time I eat, what time I get to the office, and what time I get home, and what time, you know, time blocking just, you know, duties, and when, when I set up my meetings, um, and just, um, you know, staying grateful. You know, I think that's one thing that helps me um, stay consistent, too is just staying grateful but those are just type of, the type of things i do to um 
Just, was no, question? you answered it, man. So you're, you got your daily habits. Yeah. Your daily habits are what keeps your, keeps yeah, your mind sharp. Yeah, daily habits. Mind sharp. Yeah, yeah. I think, and it's just fun. You know, I think just having fun at work, it's just so fun to grow your business and to look at numbers and look at your statistics. I think maybe looking back and following, you know, sports heroes and baseball cards and things like that. It's just fun to look at statistics and see your progress. So I think just being on top of where your numbers are, and just the having daily habits, it's just, I just don't feel like I need a vacation because I just enjoy what I do, really. Um, so that's kind of the, the way to have your mind sharp is you want to be, you want to have a spot where you feel comfortable, you know. And you don't want, you want to get uncomfortable too, but for me, the brink of overwhelmingness, when I have too much on my plate, right below that is what yeah. I like to operate. So staying busy is something where I just enjoy and I just feel at the end of the day very productive and I just enjoy it so that's I think where um, I stay sharp and I don't you know burn out or I'm not bored and uh, that's kind of where I like to keep my uh, activity level up and you know keep my schedule busy and full so I just have something that's going on next and then also I think to answer your question better um, to have the goals Mm -hmm. You know, so if you have the big picture goals, then it's going to keep your mind sharp because, you know, you're chasing after them. And that's just going to help you um, act the way you have to in accordance because of your goal. So it helps you stay disciplined. It helps you because you're always reminded and the goal has to be big enough where it just keeps you excited all the time. So I think those are the things that I do is always, you know, writing down my goals, always looking at them, um, and then checking the daily activities, and then exercise, staying gra- gra- grateful, um, and just, you Dude. know, having fun. Whew, this is so good, man. I could go off right now. I'm so excited listening to you, man, because I, I, I believe <laughs> it. Like, I think big oh, wow. goals eliminate complacency. Like, if you have big goals and you continue to push, because most people in your situation, 15 years in, the size of book you have, they're starting to get complacent. They're starting to settle down. They're starting to be like, hey, let's cash in these checks. You're like full steam ahead, baby. Choo, choo, let's go. And I freaking dig it, brother. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's it, man. That's it, Michael. I mean, it's just so – I just think the opportunity is not as big as other people think in this business. You know, so um, I'm, in it, I'm in it for the long run. I'm in it to win it. Next next uh, year, I just signed a lease that we're going to move over to – a. Um, a building uh, right upstairs actually a unit upstairs that's double our size here so you know I just put myself in situations here where I got to figure stuff out you know but I love helping people and I want to double what the book of business I want to double the staff size so everything I'm looking at next year is going to be to uh, double the business so yeah having big goals and I think uh, that's going to help us um, get keep keep us excited and who doesn't want to be excited about our you know, careers and our Absolutely, futures? Absolutely, man. You're, you're creating change yourself and, and um, uncomfortableness. And I think that's where the magic happens is, is when, when you get comfortable getting uncomfortable. Um, I think that's when you're uncomfortable, that's when, that's when money moves happen, which is what you're mm-hmm. doing, brother. So, Dan, if somebody wanted to, uh, if somebody wanted to connect with you, what's the easiest way for them to connect with you, follow you? And obviously this will all be in the show notes, but um, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I spend most of my time on Facebook and Instagram. Um, so that's just my name there, Dan Kitajima. And then uh, YouTube is a great way to, um, you know, if I could give a shout out to myself. <laughs> my YouTube channel is Dan Kitajima, How to Grow Insurance Agency, uh, which we'll have you on soon, Michael. But yeah, those are the three platforms I usually uh, I spend my most time on. And I, I'm always replying back to every comment and every uh, okay. message. My brand- well, my man, thank you so much for today. And um Obviously, all of you listening, you know this, uh, but time is the most valuable and important asset that we all have. I appreciate you spending it with Dan and I today. And Dan, I know you're super, extremely busy, and so I appreciate you taking the time out of your day and coming on the buzz. No, yeah, thank you for having me, Michael. This was so much fun. You're doing great things. I'm going to watch some uh, episodes from now on, too. But, yeah, I'm really proud to be um, a guest on the show, and I'm looking forward to it again, like I said, to have you. So, yeah, let's keep in touch. Sounds like you're doing great things for the insurance agents out there. So looking forward to Thanks, uh, brother. I appreciate that, my man. You have a good day, all right? Mm-hmm.